The Hamble Estuary is a busy waterway on the south coast of England, surrounded by fragile coastal habitats. The river used to support a thriving oyster fishery, but over the last 30 years, oysters have drastically declined due to fishing pressure, disease and invasive species. As part of the Solent Seascape project, Blue Marine Foundation is working with local authorities, partners and the wider public to bring oysters back to the Hamble giving rise to a new oyster reef. Welcome back to the Solent Seascape Project. We're here in the port of Southampton my name's Louise, I work for the Blue Marine Foundation. I'm project managing the Solent Seascape project and I'm so excited. I've been planning this part of the work for almost a year and it's finally coming together. The first stage of the process is to load the culch onto the barge. We're going to then take that barge around to the River Hamble and that culch is going to form the basis of our first native oyster restoration reef. We're just going to go meet Doug, he's one of the Solent stevedores and he's going to tell us about the first part of this process. In order to make the reef a success, the oysters need something to settle on. This is provided by a mixture of shell and gravel, also known as culch. But to collect enough for a whole reef, we need to bring out the big toys. The cargo comes in by lorry, approximately 28 tonnes per lorry. So we've got 450 tonnes to load over two barges and each grab that you can see there is about 15 tonnes in weight. So it's something a bit different for us and we're really pleased and happy to be helping and assisting where we can. Two hundred and twenty five tons of gravel is now ready to be shipped to the Humble, with another barge full coming later this week. I can't believe it's actually happening. We're finally, after a whole years of planning, getting to start to build our reef. The Hamble Estuary is well known for its very important environment, part of the Solent's wider estuarine system. Here we have um, important mudflats for wading birds, breeding birds, we have salt marshes, reed beds, we have um, a saline lagoon, coastal grazing marsh. Um, it really is um, a combination of all of the, the habitats that make up the importance of the Solent and it's designated internationally and nationally for its nature conservation value. We know the Hamble Estuary can support a native oyster population, it has done in the past. We hope that by giving it a kick start, if we wind forward a few years, we can see the establishment of a reef, the settlement of juvenile oysters, then becoming mature oysters, and reintroducing a sustainable population back into the river, which bring with it, of course, not just a habitat in itself, but all the added benefits, like encouraging additional species and particularly filtering the water. Oysters have got a fantastic ability to filter and clean the water, important for any estuary, particularly in a populated place like Solent. Yeah, the River Hamble is um, home to around about 3,200 boats afloat. So it's a lot of yachts, a lot of motorboats, and uh, it's a busy stripe of a river. And what we'll see later today is the arrival of the supporting ships uh, who are gonna lay a layer of culch on the riverbed at Swanwick. Our part in that will be enabling the river to discharge lots of baby larvae into the Solent and hopefully they'll reseed elsewhere and the result will be great for the Solent population as a whole. I mean, I think everybody knows or lots of people know that the Solent oyster species population was vast back in the day, but it's been displaced and we need to try and help and play our own small role in bringing it back. 
Arriving at the Hamble, I met the team from Jenkins Marine, who had carefully navigated the barge upriver, where a huge excavator was ready to lay the culch. So today we'll be involved with the Blue Marine Foundation and we will be laying uh, colch material onto the seabed in an even layer. You can see the river's quite open here. We've had to contend with passing vessels, yachts, motorboats, and the excavator will dig the material from in the barge and lower it down onto the seabed to get an even layer ready for the delivery of the oysters coming in the future. We anticipate being on site for three to four days. There'll be surveys undertaken to ensure that the material is deposited where it's required. We've got some amazing tools to help us lay the culch that we loaded in the port of Southampton earlier on. This is the start of the build of the Hamble Reef. the end of an absolutely amazing day. I'm drenched to the skin, the heavens have absolutely opened, but we've succeeded in laying all of our culture on the seabed to form the basis of our new native oyster restoration reef. In a couple of weeks time, once the culture settled down, we're going to be back here laying 30,000 native oysters onto the top of their new home. And the thing is about this river is it's full of people with an interest in the environment. Uh, every house, every club, every marina, they've all been involved in some way, shape or form. So there's an awful lot of interest in uh, this, this project and it's carrying a lot of weight. We're getting a lot of comments on it, a lot of positive comments. So people are thrilled to see this happen. Not only because it, um, it, it, it's a great opportunity for this particular species, but also it's a great indicator of water quality. Two weeks later, at the Institute of Marine Sciences in Portsmouth, volunteers have come together to help clean around half of the oysters, which have just arrived from Wales and Cornwall. We're here cleaning the oysters just to remove any of the uh, other organisms that live on top of the oysters. So our license dictates that we are only allowed to move the oysters themselves, so we have to remove anything else that's on there in order to make sure that our oysters are biosecure and we're not moving any um, organisms that are moving without or beyond their natural range uh, and preventing any spread of disease or, or pathogens or anything like that. Uh, so we've got a range of volunteers, um, mostly members of the general public. Uh, we've got some students here from the University of Portsmouth as well, and uh, yeah, some representatives from uh, some of the regulatory bodies, so Natural England and uh, the MMO and the Environment Agency. We're all uh, partners that we work with in this project to make sure that uh, it's done by the book and um, in the best way possible, using best practice. Uh, so these oysters have come from uh, Milford Haven area over in uh, Pembrokeshire in Wales. Uh, so we collected those a couple of days ago. And then the other half of the oysters that we're dealing with today, they've come from uh, the River Fowl over in Cornwall. We're weighing and measuring our oysters today so that we can keep track of their growth uh, and have um, uh, strong estimates of the survival percentages once we've um, deployed the oysters. Yeah, it helps us keep a good eye on the health of the reef that we're building.
the 14,939 oysters are now clean, biosecure and ready to be deployed onto the culch. Tomorrow is the big day. Uh, so the boat that we're standing on today is called the Anjou Marie and my, uh, my dad skippers it and my uh, granddad before him and uh, yeah, it means a lot uh, to me to be part of uh, the family business and uh, yeah, I love it. As a young boy in summer holidays I'd come out and give my dad a hand. There used to be loads of oysters around come in with like hundreds of bags, everyone would be waiting for the first of October. It's like a, the best time to start catching them. But um, over the years, it's just dwindled away. So, yeah, it's sad. And that was our main stay, is the oysters. The oysters was our prime uh, earn at that time. So that's what we, uh, we relied on, basically, we relied on that. That some pe a lot of people are sceptical about it. But, you know, you, you all need to work together to try and enhance the situations. Things might need a little kickstart, like the oysters. It might, it might not be right, but as you say, you're trying, and hopefully you can learn something from it. And, um, you know, watch this space. David has precise coordinates to hit and the oysters must be dropped at exactly the right time so they land on the now settled culch. It's such an exciting day today. It's the day that we are going to drop the 14,939 oysters that we've brought all the way from Wales onto our reef here in the River Hamble. We've had a massive team of volunteers to help us put, put them through the biosecurity process and we have another team of people here on the boat helping us to put them onto the reef site which is just up here. So monitoring is a really important part of all of this oyster restoration and one way that we're able to do that is actually by tagging. We've tagged about 1,500 oysters as part of this project for this reef and we've used uh, bee tags actually and this will enable us to look at how those oysters are growing and surviving over the coming years. is like the icing on the cake. And just like that, a new oyster reef is born. It's something that every fisherman would want. It's a no-brainer for, for us. I'm so proud to be part of it. Um, I'd love to sort of see them start making a comeback. It's really, really important that in order to conduct important projects like this and to move forward with nature conservation, we don't just consider if we should do something with the environment, it's how we do it for the environment. If we can do it here, hopefully we can inspire other people to be able to do these kind of projects elsewhere. The Solon Seascape project aims to restore oysters but also salt marsh seagrass and seabird nesting habitat across the whole of the Solent. Oh, getting to this point where we put the living oysters on it which are hopefully going to really uh, help biodiversity and help water quality in the River Humble is really amazing.